All right, Jonathan Newsom joins us on another Cardinals check-in here. And uh, Janu, I know you're in Indianapolis, which is weird for you because you're about a month <laughs> away from what should have been the start of training camp, right? Man, right. What should have been. But, yeah, it's postponed until further notice. TBA. You said you came back to the States like a couple of days before they closed the border. Um, what's it like being in a different country and having that consideration? Like, did you even think, hey, if, if we don't leave now, there might be a chance that, that we're not getting back into the States? Um, yeah, bro. I, I, honestly, I was I was concerned because I saw that, you know, I just saw the immediate response was a little bit. Um, there was that concern that, wow, we might end up getting stuck over here if we don't leave soon. And we actually were supposed to be um, in Canada. I mean, we were supposed to leave Canada way before. We were supposed to leave um, like in January, but we were waiting on my my second son's um, birth certificate. So he was born December 13th. So because of the holidays and then next thing you know, there's an epidemic. Uh, it took forever just to get his paperwork and stuff. I know your mom's a registered nurse. So how is, uh, how's life for her right now? Uh, man, she's on the front line, man. Just, uh, I, I, honestly, man, my mom's such a soldier, but you wouldn't even know anything was going on. You know, she still goes to work as if nothing, I mean, as if it's nothing. I mean, she says she's been doing this. I mean, it's been crazy in the hospital and it's, you know, people have been sick and all that. So it's like, like for her, not much has changed either. It's just, I guess with it, with the emotion behind it and the energy that everybody puts behind it, it is just kind of scary in a sense because people are scared. So ultimately, if everybody around you is afraid, only, only the, I don't know who, who wouldn't be afraid if everybody else is afraid. You're going to be a little bit afraid. Even the toughest person got a little bit of, you know, uh, you know, nervousness in them. You know, you, you feel those things, you know, inside those, those emotions of it could be me and people are dying. And stuff. That's the reality of it is tough, I'm sure. But she's handling it as she always has. You, you don't get worried as a son? She always been in the thick of things for me. And, you know, you know if, you, if you follow my life, my life is pretty crazy, so. That's my, <laughs> if she can hold me down, I'm pretty sure she can hold the rest of the world down. In here. So, no worries with that. How do you, how does this work as a professional athlete right now where you're in limbo, you've got to stay ready, but you don't have anywhere to stay ready. You don't know what you're staying ready for. Uh, what do you do? Nah, you stick to the basics, man. Like, um, you know, you take what you've learned over the years. For me, it's just um, having a schedule and sticking to it and being consistent and being disciplined. So you keep those same, um, morals and values and just apply it somehow, some way, try to apply you. I mean, we're human, so we're meant to adapt to anything, you know what I mean? So if people just tap in, just tap in, you know, the power is within and you can get everything done still. Everything can still be done. I can still go out here and jog in place for for two hours straight if I need to. And that'll be enough. That'll be equivalent to me going and doing a, a, a Dave Peely conditioning test. Now nah, I won't say that. Let me just take that back right now. I won't say that. There's nothing that <laughs> that's equivalent to a day Phoebe workout. However, you know, you take what you learn from, from, from a guy like Dave and you apply that same type of pressure to your own workout and you get you, you get a good workout in hand on training. I, I do a lot of push ups, sit ups and body weight stuff because I feel like you need to have control over your own weight before you try to go toss somebody else around. What's Canada been like for you? Uh and you've been there for a couple of years now, so you've gotten gotten your feet underneath of you oh man uh the fans are great man it's, it's, it's similar to playing football down here because i mean it's, it's the biggest thing for them and um uh, my life completely changed when i went to canada it was a, and you know I, I feel like when i went to canada i was a different person than when i just left you know and i just came back now like I, I i didn't know so much about myself until i got into the home you know like i was doing a lot when i was in the nfl man. but i was coming from a situation where i was dead broke you know, borrowing Sinead's car all the time. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have nothing, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Went from dead broke to I'm I'm the leading sack. I'm the, I'm the rookie leading sack. You know what I'm saying? I'm leading rookies in sacks in the NFL. And I'm just a pick around draft pick. And, you know, this throwing bread at me, bro. There's just a lot going on at the time. And I honestly feel like I got lost in the sauce. Like, if you ever heard that term, like, you can't really get lost in the sauce. And I've been like, it was a lot of sauce at the time. Like, we was, we was killing it, 2014. Then next thing you know, just things, I don't know, things, God got a good way of just sitting you down and teaching you a lesson when you need to be taught. You could choose the way that everything happened the way it did, or you still get by the way things were in your six years into the NFL and you're still playing with the Colts this year. Um, 
Would you take that or would you take the journey you've had? Uh, I'll take the journey. I never, I wouldn't change a thing about my life. Man. My life has been great. You know, even even in the hard times, you know, in the losses, there have been lessons. So it all evens up at the end of the day. You know, when you learn from your mistakes, that's just as good as somebody giving you a million dollars because you can do something with that. You know what I mean? I can, I can, I can make a difference now because I've changed. I've become a better person. Yeah. And for me, like going to NFL, like I, I, I've done it, bro. Really. Like I've technically I've done it. I've played at a high level. I've, I've tackled all the great quarterbacks. I mean, and all in one year. You know what I mean? And it was great. And it'd be great to do it again and again and again, which I know I'm capable of. And I'm pretty sure everybody knows me. I know I'm capable of, but it's a business, you know what I mean? And honestly, I think it would have killed me, bro. If I would have never, if, if I would have been able to just keep getting by being the same person that I was. And cause I see, honestly, I see it with some people that I know that are still in the league. I still, I, I see people still getting by, but they haven't really tapped into the, to the individual that they need to be. And it's because NFL just has a lot of distractions, man. You know, you know what I mean? I can't tell you, I, you know how much money I blew? Like, I can't tell you how much I would have just, like, man, I wouldn't even be spending no money, bro. I stayed in the house, I would have got me a big old, it was just, I would just done things a lot differently had I been the person that I am now. But I wasn't. You just need to have, you need to be able to be mindful. And I think mindfulness is one thing that I definitely have picked up over the years, is just being mindful. And that's, that speaks volumes, bro. We could talk about being mindful all day. Uh, you have two kids or three now? <laughs> I got two, man. Two? Okay. Don't, don't give me no extra kids, though. I look. <laughs> two is enough right now, man. That's that's just because you delivered one of them. Yeah, I technically delivered both of them. But I was just in the hospital with the other one. So, But the, the second one, we were in the hotel room next to our bed without any assistance. So technically, I would have delivered both. I did I did guide the zeal out when we were in the hospital the first time. But J. Brian was all by himself. And... That was amazing, bro. That is was that, just is that one of your proudest bro. moments? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure, man. That's my biggest play I've ever made in my life. Bigger than that, Peyton. The, the, I, there was one quote you had. You said, in the heat of the moment, you've got to make the play. In the heat of the moment, you've got to make the play, bro. <laughs> it, and, and I think people know that about me. Like, I'm going to make a play. I hold it, I'm holding that over her head for the rest of our lives. You hear me? There's nothing I can do wrong. That's all I'm saying. I say, oh, yeah. Find you, oh yeah, you, see if anybody else I had gonna deliver a baby like that, like how I did. You know what I mean? I'm the, I'm the greatest. So she, and she knows that, she knows she's the greatest too, man. We got a great relationship, man, that's my dog.